Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and we now have a new look at the Justice League movie coming out this November. And from what we've seen in this trailer and the footage released at Comic-Con last summer, apparently Aquaman ain't no joke. Like, no offense to the old school blonde Aquaman, but I feel like he would have Jason Momoa Aquaman action figures. And yeah, this trailer was pretty great, and it included some missable details that could be giving us a clearer picture of what kind of movie Justice League is going to be. And before I break it all down, real quick, this video is sponsored by our friends at Movement which is offering an awesome deal that I'm gonna tell you about later on. But let's get started. Yeah. We have to be ready. You, me, the others. There's an attack coming from far away. Not coming, Bruce. So this trailer starts off with these awesome geoporn shots of Iceland, with Bruce Wayne deciding that the best way to travel icy mountain terrain is on horseback. <laughs> sure. Now say what you will about Zack Snyder and his whole direction of the DC Cinematic Universe, but the guy has an eye for epic visuals that are really fun to interpret meaning out of. For example, Batman on horseback is such a striking image. Like Batman is better known as a wealthy urbanite who relies on his intelligence and combat skills and technological resources. So to see him giddy up like this is such a naturalistic turn for the character. And Zack Snyder has said that he modeled the team assembly concept of Justice League on classic films like Seven Samurai and the western version of that film, The Magnificent Seven. And in both movies, ragtag groups of fighters come together to defeat a larger threat. So putting Bruce on horse here might be an homage to those films. But also, this black horse could be a reference to the Bible. In the book of Revelation, there are four horsemen of the apocalypse, and the black horse and rider are associated with the image of a scale, which in some interpretations means this writer is the bringer of justice. And considering Apocalypse is also the name of the home planet of Darkseid and his parademon army, I feel like this justice-associated black-dressed writer could be more than a coincidence. And this may just be me, but I feel like these shots of horses and snow flurries were also inspired by the Game of Thrones aesthetic. Like Bruce is kind of like a brother of the Night's Watch warning that winter is coming. But then again, maybe I only think that because Khal Drogo is in this movie. And in case you were wondering, this location is a real-life herring factory in Djupavik, Iceland. I think I'm saying that right. It was a small fishing town where herring were stored and processed. And before I move on, Bruce's line about being ready for an attack coming from far away echoes the conversation he had with Diana at the end of Batman vs Superman. Help me find the others like you. Perhaps they don't want to be found. They will. And they'll fight. So yeah, it looks like Justice League is picking up right up where Batman vs Superman left off. Okay, let's move on. It's already here. The others. Where are they? So in this section, we hear Diana's ominous response that the far away threat is actually already here on Earth. She's of course referring to mother boxes. That was the device that we saw briefly in Batman vs Superman when Dr. Silas Stone used one while experimenting on his son, Victor Stone, cyborg. And we went into the backstory of mother boxes in our first trailer breakdown, but basically there are three mother boxes on Earth and Darkseid and his boy Steppenwolf are looking for them. And one is apparently with Dr. Stone, while another is buried in the ground, unless that's the same one, leaving the remaining one or maybe two to be with the Amazons or the Atlanteans, most likely. Anyway, this is interesting because in Batman vs Superman, I assume that the Mother Box technology reassembled itself as Cyborg's parts, and that Cyborg as an entity would be kind of a Mother Box himself, sought by Darkseid, the way that Vision is kind of an Infinity Stone himself, sought by Thanos in the MCU. And by the way, if I ever bring up parallels between the DCEU and other superhero movie universes, I'm not saying one is better or ripping off the other, it's just that movie studios tend to approach these comic book adaptations in similar ways, especially when most of them are just trying to make movies to sell toys. There's really only a couple ways to skin that cat. Anyway, more on that later. But now it looks like Dr. Stone's mother box is still in its original form, and it's opening up his world to spooky, spooky parademons. And I'm guessing this is taking place after the injury Victor suffers that leads to his becoming cyborg, which is why all of his football trophies are boxed up in the shot. Also, you gotta love the casting here with Joe Morton as Dr. Stone. A lot of you have noticed that he also played Dr. Miles Dyson from T2 Judgment Day. Like, this guy is perfect at playing scientists whose research opens up the world to these apocalyptic disasters. Scientists, when will they learn, right? All right, moving on. Arthur Curry, the Aquaman. It's on him. Organic. 
think in biomechatronic body parts. He's a cyborg. You should probably move. Okay, so here we saw more shots of Aquaman doing his thing, rescuing this stranded fisherman on a rock, and putting this bottle of booze on his tab, the same bottle that we saw him chugging in the first trailer. You know, I just hope he recycles it. You don't want your seahorse friends to get their heads caught in it, Aquaman. And as far as his portrayal goes, I feel like Jace Momoa is combining a few different superhero performances that I really like. There's definitely some Hugh Jackman Wolverine in there. He's the angry loner in bars who acts like he doesn't care, but totally does. But then also kind of Drax from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Like the big guy, a few words, who turns out to be just a big kid in battle. But really, as much of a scene stealer Aquaman was in this trailer, I was also interested to finally see Cyborg in action. Like we barely saw any of them in the last trailer, and these renders look a lot more detailed, though I gotta say, still maybe a little too CGI heavy. But I did appreciate that his torso and his limbs look a bit thinner, which makes sense because his biomechtronic parts are really just replacing missing body parts and don't need to be as flexible out, which I really like because if they were too bulky, it can kind of look like a guy wearing a cyborg suit, which would be kind of lame. Whereas this seems a bit more like how a cyborg would really look. And check out this shot where he saves a cop from this fiery tank flipping over on him. Now, based on the surroundings of the background of the shot and that cop car, it looks like this could be taking place in that Metropolis city center. So at least some of the action in this movie will take us back to Metropolis. And I love Cyborg's line here. You should probably move. And I feel like this cop might have said that to Victor moments earlier and now Cyborg's turning the table on him. All right, moving on. Barry Allen. Whoever you're looking for, it's not me. You're the Batman. Okay, so we saw a lot of this stuff with Barry Allen, The Flash in the first trailer, and you should definitely check out our breakdown for that because we dug deep into how fast The Flash can move based on the speed of the Batarang, as well as all the stuff in the background, including this screen with an episode of Rick and Morty playing. And we get to see more of The Flash's super speed and speed force, which takes the form of blue lightning, probably to differentiate from the CW series. And notice how the speed force grows depending on how much Barry is exerting himself. With just a few bolts in Barry's home when he's reaching out to grab the Batarang, but a full trail of energy as he jets across the landscape. Now, question here, where does this take place? It sounds like part of Justice League will take place on Stryker Island, the abandoned island in the bay between Gotham and Metropolis where they fought Doomsday, and I would say this scorched earth looks a bit similar to that. But then, look at those mountains in the background. This is somewhere totally different. It also shows up as a background in a few other shots in this trailer, and to me, it kind of looks like the ruins of a city after a nuclear disaster like Chernobyl or Hiroshima. And other shots of this place include these otherworldly formations, like this could be another planet, or Earth after some terraforming is underway. Like, I'm thinking that maybe Darkseid is terraforming Earth into Apocalypse, similar to how Zod tried to do with Krypton in Man of Steel. Also, it could be that apocalyptic city that we saw in the nightmare sequence in Batman vs Superman. I don't know, we'll see. And I love how right after Barry realizes that Bruce is his favorite superhero, the trailer cuts to this super snidery fanboy shot of Batman swinging through a hail of parademon fire. And I gotta say, just like the last Batfleck movie, I'm really digging the fluidity of Batman's movements, with this dive and roll flowing right into him flinging some kind of disabler on a parademon. It reminds me a lot of that smooth motion of the warehouse fight in Batman vs Superman, and like then, I feel like this is inspired by the look and the combat style of the Arkham games. Alright, moving on. They said the age of heroes would never come again. It has to. Okay, so in this section, over shots of the Justice League lineup, Diana says this. They said the age of heroes would never come again. This is the first of two subtle hints pointing towards the backstory of this whole DC movie universe. And before I get into this whole Age of Heroes reference, I want to talk real quick about our friends from Movement who sponsored this video. So, Movement makes really stylish and really affordable watches, which is really useful for someone like me because apparently people care about what you look like when you're on YouTube. Huh, who'd have thunk? So here it is. This is one of their watches, and there are a ton of options online. And you can order one at mbmtwatches.com slash new rockstars and get $15 off with our code new rock stars. Hey, they also do sunglasses. Oh, look at me. I'm James Bond. But again, if you want an awesome watch for $15 off, just go to mvmt.com slash new rock stars and use our code new rock stars. 
Okay, back to Diana's Age of Heroes line. Now, you may recognize Age of Heroes as a term from the Game of Thrones backstory and a brief limited series from the Marvel comics. But I think Diana is meaning it more generally here. Back to a time when heroes stood together to defend Earth. And she's most likely referring to her Age of Heroes, back in the days when the Amazons, Atlanteans, and men joined forces to defeat Darkseid's forces. But it's possible that she's referring to a more recent Age of Heroes, because we know that this version of Batman used to work alongside partners as well, but more on that later. And I really liked all the shots of each of the Justice League, especially Aquaman using his trident to make some parademon kebab. And you may have recognized this music as a hard rock cover of the Beatles Come Together. And even though I might have preferred the original Beatles version, Come together. I like how this trailer uses this late 60s song about people with conflicting ideologies teaming up, just like the Justice League is doing. At the same time, not to be too negative about this trailer, because I really liked it, but I could have done without the justice for all title. Like I get that the USA marketing approach is a common appeal and hey, it has the word justice in it. However, when you think about it, justice for all are the final words of the Pledge of Allegiance, right? And that whole pledge started during the Cold War so that people would swear their loyalty to America and against communism, which isn't at all what the Beatles were really preaching with Come Together. So really this justice for all is just kind of a nonsensical addition that I'm guessing the marketing people didn't really want us to think about. But then, check out this shot of Wonder Woman as she takes down these guys in suits. Now this is really the only time in the trailer that anyone in the Justice League has taken down human enemies, not parademons. So who are these guys? Well, check out those black gloves. They could be some high-level thieves, and maybe this is just an early mission with Wonder Woman foiling a bank robbery or something. We also get this shot of Cyborg flying, and I hate to compare, but come on, look at the way his helmet crawls over his face. That's gotta be inspired by, you know, old uh, tin can metalhead. What's his name again? But really, I just love the photography as Cyborg shoots through the clouds at the moon. It has this dreamlike, escapist quality, kind of like the memorable shots from E.T. or Aladdin. This also feels like the kind of melodramatic move past versions of Superman would pull, rising above it all, trying to get away from his grounded problems, like, why can't I save everyone? Anyway, let's move on. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. One thing I can tell you is you got to be Turn. So in this section we get another look at the Flash from the first trailer and now we see he's fighting a parademon using the momentum from his super speed to blast him through a wall. And yeah, it's super great to hear Bruce say that his superpowers are that he's rich. Basically echoing the thought that we've all had about the Batman at some point. Like, sure, world's greatest detective, multi-skilled fighter, master illusionist. Yeah, 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 I'm with you. But yeah, it's nice to see Bruce acknowledge that money helps. And to be honest, I'm really liking the Batflex comedic timing in this footage. Like he seems way less moody than he was in Batman vs Superman, but also not too wisecracky like Spider-Man or Deadpool would be. Affleck's performance reminds me more of the tone of like Kevin Conroy's Batman from the animated series. Like he avoids chit chat and he makes the most of his few words. I'll be able to go into your brain even if you're wide awake. My brain's not a nice place to be. We also get our first look at the Nightcrawler in action. The Nightcrawler is a new tank-like Batmobile that can climb surfaces. And you can see that extendable arm that he uses to pierce surfaces to get a hold, kind of like an ice axe used by mountain climbers. And I love how the cockpit allows for a different seating position for Batman for when the crawler goes vertical, kind of like the gunner position in the tumbler from Batman Begins. And if you look closely, this whole location is the same shaft that we saw all of them walking into at the end of the first trailer. And I'm guessing that this could be the parademon nest that people described from set visits. Maybe part of the tunnels underneath Stryker Island. And it could just be me, but when Affleck says my turn and returns fire on the parademons, it seems like he's channeling his past role in Pearl Harbor just a little bit. I like when someone's shooting back at you. Whoa, I forgot about that accent. Okay, yeah, yeah let's move on. Come together! Okay, so a few more interesting shots in this section. First, there's a shot of Victor Stone in his football days. In the last trailer, we saw him in his GCU Letterman jacket, so I'm guessing that we're gonna see a pre-cyborg flashback before he got his new body. We also get this finished shot of Wonder Woman slamming her gauntlet on her shield, which we saw in behind the scenes footage with a green screen. There's another shot of the Flash from inside his speed force as he swings side to side, and this kind of reminds me of the chase scene in the movie The Incredibles with Dash, and that character was obviously inspired by the Flash. There's also this 
this quick shot of Lois Lane, suggesting that even though Superman doesn't appear anywhere in this trailer, his presence will still be felt throughout Justice League on an emotional level. And yeah, he'll probably end up playing some role in the story, more than just his absence bringing all of them together. There's also Aquaman using his trident to control this raging water, kind of like Moses in the Ten Commandments or Jean Grey at the end of X2. And judging from the walls of this place, this could be the inside of the flying fox, which is kind of like Bruce's base of command aircraft that contains the Batmobile and stuff. You see him and Diana in it a lot. But this location kind of looks a bit more like that tunnel shaft location as it gets flooded and Aquaman is buying time for the rest of the team. And before I move on, we get this quick shot of Mira in Atlantis, flanked by two Atlantean bodyguards. Mira is Aquaman's wife and queen of Atlantis, and she's played here by Amber Heard. All right, let's move on. Shall we? So in this section, we get these quick shots of Barry Allen with his father, played by Billy Crudup, who previously worked with Zack Snyder in The Watchmen. He played Dr. Manhattan. And actually, this same scene with Barry talking to him from behind prison glass was depicted in the CW series. In that show, Henry Allen was falsely accused of murdering Barry's mother, when the real culprit was Reverse Flash. Now, I'm not sure if the movie is going to go that deep into Barry's backstory, or if Reverse Flash will be part of this movie. It may just be a nod to that, or setting up a solo film. Okay, back to these massive battlefield shots, showing us thousands of parademons fighting the Amazons. So it looks like we're actually going to see some of this ancient war from Darkseid's first invasion attempt, maybe as a prologue for this whole movie. And I love that Snyder shot it with this epic sense of scale, similar to Mordor in the Lord of the Rings films. And if you look closely at these shots, there's actually some similarities to the nightmare sequence in Batman vs Superman. The terrain is covered in these massive markings, similar to the Darkseid Omega symbol. And in the background, you can see the same fiery column, suggesting that Darkseid was indeed trying to use terraformation in this ancient battle. Okay, let's move on to this final section. It's good to see you playing well with others again. Just like a bat. I dig it. Maybe temporary. Okay, so yeah, obviously lots of great stuff here. First, we see J.K. Simmons taking over as Jim Gordon, and he says the most intriguing line in this trailer. It's good to see you playing well with others again. So along with that Age of Heroes line, playing well with others again sets up a super interesting backstory for Batman, because Gordon is referring to the fact that Batman used to work with partners, namely Robin, Jason Todd, and Nightwing, Dick Grayson. Remember, in Batman vs Superman, we saw how Bruce keeps Robin's destroyed and disfigured suit in the Batcave, implying that Robin was killed by Joker, kind of like in the comic Death in the Family. Also, there was that little Easter egg in Suicide Squad on Harley Quinn's bio, where she was listed as an accomplice to the murder of Robin, suggesting that she and Joker murdered him together in this movie universe timeline. And this line from Gordon suggests that we might see a flashback to that moment. We also know that Warner Brothers is planning on a Nightwing solo film. Either way, it sounds like a big focus of Justice League will be Batman's struggle to work with partners and deal with that guilt. It's also great to see Aquaman in his full Atlantean getup finally making fun of someone else in the Justice League. Just like a bat. I dig it. And notice how Bruce is kind of smirking here because he knows that this is a callback to that moment that ended the last trailer where he said this to Aquaman. I hear you can talk to fish. And yeah, we all love this shot of Aquaman surfing on the Batmobile, showing he's just as much of a badass on land and air as he is on sea. But why do we love this shot so much? Now, I have a theory that this particular shot with Batman and Aquaman together and others like it are what drive all of these superhero movies. Like, notice how most of the iconic moments from all the films in the genre Genre, include multiple superheroes sharing the screen, either through teamwork or infighting, so that their abilities complement each other in interesting ways. For example, Iron Man using Cap's shield to reflect the beam in the Avengers, and then Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman each using their abilities to take down Doomsday, Thor hitting Cap's shield to create a shockwave in Age of Ultron, Spider-Man snatching Cap's shield in Civil War, Colossus tossing Wolverine in The Last Stand, Ant-Man riding Hawkeye's arrow and jumping into Iron Man's armor. 
Armor, and now Aquabat. So why do we love these images so much? Because toys. All of these are the same kinds of fantasy scenarios we would create with our action figures as kids. Like sure, Batman and Wolverine can be best friends, and they drive in a Ninja Turtles pizza thrower. And you better believe that DC and Marvel depend on these visuals in particular, driving kids and their parents and lonely man children out to stores all over the world to spend billions of dollars on small plastic versions of these characters and various things that look like them. It's the whole reason the studios are shelling out these huge budgets for these movies and why the films are sometimes criticized for being more focused on spectacle than they are on story and character. Because let's face it, story and character are great, but they don't really move merch. Anyway, industry cynicism aside, I'm absolutely going to spend my money seeing Justice League because I'm a sheep. This movie looks great from the trailers. Of course, I felt the same way about the trailers of Suicide Squad and Batman vs Superman and Man of Steel. But maybe this time, Zack Snyder will get it right, right? Okay, let me know what you think in the comments and check out our breakdown of the first Justice League trailer from Comic-Con last year and my breakdowns of the Wonder Woman trailers, which looks like it's gonna play a big role in setting up the events of Justice League. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to New Rockstars. Also, please share this video and if you really like New Rockstars, you can contribute to us on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our current patrons. You guys are the best, especially Reverend Zandria. Rev, your name is as amazing as your generosity. You can hit me up on Twitter at EA Voss with any thoughts or theories you have on Justice League, or follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars for updates on our videos. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.